And next, we're joined by Chancellor Joe Klein, uh, who became New York City Schools Chancellor in 2002 when he was when it has instituted a comprehensive public school reform program, Children First. Previously, he was the chairman and CEO of Bertelsmann Incorporated and the chief U.S. liaison officer of Bertelsmann AG. Prior to Bertelsmann, he served as assistant attorney general in charge of U.S. Justice Antitrust Division after serving two years as deputy counsel to, uh, to, to President Clinton. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and good morning to our distinguished panelists and my colleagues. I wanted to thank Chancellor Klein for taking the time out of his very busy schedule to join the committee here in Washington today. As many of you may be aware, Chancellor Klein, uh, re the reauthorization of No Child Left Behind Act will have a tremendous impact on our home, New York City. The New York City school system that you oversee has over 1,400 schools with over 1 million students. Yes. It's the largest school system in the United States with 136,000 employees and an operating budget of $15 billion. The New York City school system, of which I am a proud graduate, is larger than the school system of at least eight states. Chancellor Klein has played a key role in many of the city's recent education successes, but there's still a long way to go. So it is my hope that we can work together as educators and legislators, as public servants striving to help America's children to develop a balanced approach that improves teacher quality and also recognizes the institutional knowledge of our best public school teachers are a key resource in improving overall quality. As we focus on teacher recruitment initiatives and incentives, we also understand the vital importance of those excellent teachers in schools across America who are already providing a high quality educational experience to our ch children. Again, Chancellor Klein, thank you for coming today. It is my pleasure to introduce you to this body and the committee looks forward to what I anticipate will be a thoughtful yet lively conversation. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. McKeon, members of the committee. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Ms. Clark, thank you for your kind words and your distinguished service to our city. You know, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I told John when I sat down, I said, this reminds me of the Clinton White House. He always got to speak before I did. But there's one major difference. This is the first time I've ever agreed with any, everything he said, actually. So it's good, it's good to see you've matured so well, John. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, you said it at the outset, and uh, I think this is a serious matter. We all know the recent uh, report out, out of the Aspen Commission pointed out that teacher quality is the single most important ingredient in a child's education, and tragically in America today, teacher quality is unevenly distributed in our schools, and students with the greatest needs tend to have access to the least qualified and least effective teachers. And if we don't address that issue head on, we are not going to succeed in transforming education in America. Let me give you some examples in my city. People talk about, for example, high turnover of teachers. In some schools, we have a perpetual turnover of teachers. In other schools, we have absolute stability. In some schools, the average teacher salary will be $20,000 more on average than in another school. In some schools, if I get a vacancy, Two, three, four hundred people apply to teach there. In other schools, every year I'm running through 20, 30, 40 new teachers. And as long as we continue with the current structures and the current incentives, we're going to continue to get the current results. What I'm excited about is the TEACH Act that uh, you and Senator Kennedy have put forward, and I think we ought to take it to the highest possible levels. I'll give you three examples from New York City. Working with our union, we've negotiated a $10,000 pay differential for what we call lead teachers. They go in a pair to high-need schools. I designate the teacher, I designate the schools. Over 200 now working in New York City. They build capacity. They attract other talent. They begin to create the kind of positive conditions. Second thing we did is we gave a $15,000 signing bonus to math science teachers to commit to go for three years to a high-need school. As a result of that, in two months, we got over 100 new teachers to come to New York from other school districts in order to uh, go to high-needs schools. We're now working with NYU and CUNY. We've put together a lot of scholarship money for kids in math and science to train and then again commit to go to high-needs schools. And I think it's absolutely essential, as John and others have said, that we put in place meaningful pay-for-performance programs in high-needs schools. If we don't do that, we're not going to be able to generate the incentives we need to make sure we get the talent. 
And let me give you, the, for me, the proudest example and see if I can convince Dr. Sanford to come to New York with this. We just negotiated a contract with our uh, administrator's union. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm on the airplane, wherever I go, I'm always looking for great principles. Those are the people who change schools. But under our new principles contract, and this was a, a, a big breakthrough for everybody, a principal in New York basically can make as much as 150000 and then another $50,000, 25000 to go to a high-needs school for three years to do turnaround work, and another 25000 on a pay-for-performance basis. Is what? Yeah, no, I know. <clears throat> plus, I have a little discretionary money we could throw in, too. So, <clears throat> but, but that's the kind of results you want to reward. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, that's fine. But as a result of these programs in New York, what we're doing for the first time is really beginning to create the conditions which will attract talent, reward talent, and keep talent in high needs schools. And you know, MTLB can mandate that we get uh, a highly qualified teacher in each, each classroom. But if the law of supply and demand doesn't allow that, then the mandate is going to be an unfulfilled mandate. And if the federal government wants to change the facts on the ground in urban education, uh, I would suggest you put significant amounts of dollars in meaningful incentives to attract talent. And let me assure you, this is not a zero-sum game. In my high-performing schools, I will continue to have high-quality teachers. But the fact of the matter is, if you pay people the same and they have a choice between working with kids who come to school with all the privileges and working with kids who come to school with all the challenges, most people, most people are going to choose to work with the kids with all the privileges. And that's why we have this enormous inequity in the distribution of the most vital resource in urban education, that is teachers and principals. So I hope in this reauthorization, Mr. Chairman, that your leadership, the leadership of Mr. McCain, and the entire Congress gets behind a meaningful, incentive-driven, pay-for-performance set of programs so that we can finally give the kids 53 years after Brown an equal educational opportunity. Thank you.